realise that my carrots have been in that pan for ages. I have absolutely burned the hell out of my little carrots. They're blackened and gross on the bottom. Better. Mm -hmm. Also, make sure you wash them. I just got a little bit of grit. Okay. Make sure you next wipe. batch, give them, give them a good wash. All right, coming down to the wire. I have to get a second batch of carrots on. Fortunately, I'm working with little baby carrots today. They are thin and they don't need a huge amount of time to cook. There's no mandarins there. The biggest problem I have right now is there are no mandarins left in that pantry. Time to start putting all this together. Ten minutes to go. Come on. Come on, Jessica. Cooking the carrots without the mandarin juice is um, not going to be an option. It really needs the brightness and the acidity from that kind of citrus. Can anybody see where the other half mandarin I had is? Massive worry. If I don't have this element on the dish, then, um, you know, there's not really any point in finishing it off. Hey, Jessica. Here, yeah, mate. There's another half mandarin for you. Oh, look at that. That's great. I hope it doesn't cost you. Look. It might give her the edge, but this is what cooking's about. We're here to do the same thing today, and that's to cook some fantastic food. All right, let's do it. The next step is to get this pumpkin puree on the go. You need liquid. Yeah. I don't want to add too much kind of plain grapeseed oil. It doesn't have a huge amount of flavour to it. So definitely worried about that being a missing element from it. Jess, what about your comfy duck leg oil? Yeah. Cracking idea, Jessica. Jessie suggests that I use the oil from the comfy quail legs in my puree, which is a fantastic idea. It's just going to add a little bit of meatiness and tie the whole dish together. I want to come on, let's hurry. Let's hurry. Yeah. Let's hurry. Come on. Come on. You're on the home stretch, Jessica. Yeah. Leave yourself enough time to plate up, okay? okay? Shannon's starting to look really nervous, which is not a good thing. I've got to get this quail out, so I've got to plate it up. I am running out of time. Right, time to start putting this bad boy together. Come on, Jessica, come on. This is it, guys. Two minutes to go. Pressure's on and the clock's ticking. I've got to concentrate and actually deliver a dish. The quail's cooked slightly pinkish. This is how I like it. Some would think it's undercooked, but I've just got to hope that the judges see things the way I do or I'm done. Static. This is definitely one of the better cooks that I've had in the competition. I think that I've done a really good job. Yeah, that looks <laughs> yummy. I've tried one of my little comfy quail legs and I'm super glad I took the risk on doing that. They're delicious, so um, fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm really happy with the dish that's turned out. Time's up, the food's on the plate. I feel like we've all done the best we can today. I know I've put my heart and soul into my dish. Look, it's in the judges' hands now. It's all just a waiting game. I'm looking forward to this one because I think Jessica is exactly the girl to uh, take this immunity pin out. She's been cooking brilliantly and she's flavour-driven, which I love. Well, let's find out. Let's get the first dish in. This is confit and pan-roasted quail, pumpkin puree and mandarin-glazed carrots. Gee, look at those carrots. Mm. Look at that puree. Those carrots look great. Look at that quail. Look at the colour of the quail. <laughs> it looks good. It's just ultimate autumn, isn't it? It looks like they've confied the legs yep. and, you know, roasted the roasted yeah. the breasts of the quail. So that's fantastic. That's showing technique. Let's taste it. The, the tops of the carrots, I thought for sure I'm going to eat a top of a carrot and it's going to be full of grit and no, and delicious. How good are those comfy legs? I've got a whole one. Yeah. Mm. 
really good. Yum. Ooh. I mean, it's a sign of a nicely cooked quail when you can eat the meat straight off the bone. It's super delicious. Can you pass me that plate, then? You know what? Again, you know, I'm going to refer to what was on the table, and there was no butter on the table. I mean, that pumpkin's been roasted, so you intensify the flavour, you bring up the sweetness, you make it a bit darker and richer without having to add things like butter and cream. Yeah. X, Y, Z. That is tasty, that yeah. pure. I love it. I mean, straight up, I love the dish. I think it's delicious. There's beautiful caramelised flavours in there. And what I like most is the flavour in the pumpkin. It's really sweet, really roasty and caramelised. I, I think there's mandarin in that pumpkin puree. Yeah. That gives it that little it's bit good, of... It's good, isn't it? The puree, good. But there's just... It's little... For me, it's just lacking some of that freshness. Yeah. See, I, mm. I disagree, cos I think that kind of dish... It's all warm and comfortable in front of the fireplace, you know? It's, mm. it's a cold and chilly day and everything's rounded and earthy. I'm not saying that this isn't a delicious dish. It is a delicious dish. It is a delicious dish, but mm. my, I ask myself the question, would it be better if there had been a little bit of butter in that puree? And I go... Maybe. Mm. Well, we're all thinking I, slightly different. Before you score, I just want to point out, look at that. And you're still dipping your fingers in, Matt yeah, Preston. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Shall we score? That is a rock and roll dish. Delicious. Great start. <laughs> Let's get the next dish in. Yeah. This is autumn fruit poached quail, candied grape, radish and fennel. Hey, that looks all right, doesn't it? Yeah, nice. I love the colour. I love the colour of those little... Little, little, little radishes there and they look like some little fennel tops. Very pretty. It looks flavoursome. Shall we taste? Yeah, great looking dish. Let's go. Oh, that, that sauce looks good, Gary. Yeah, it does look really good. And it looks like this, this poached grapes, isn't there? Or, yeah, poached grapes and fresh grapes. Oh, is that, is that charred, I see? That could be a, um, a Jessica indicator. Can I have a little scrape around in that bowl? who's cooked that dish. I love that. Mm. For a table of ingredients that had no sugar on there, um, you know, there was no honey on there, yep. you know, there is so much delicious sweetness that's come out of the, the cooking of this dish. Yeah. That's so yum. And that's obviously from caramelisation of the bird. Yeah. And also those grapes that have, as you cook them down, they're intensifying. You yeah. Know, a bit like a yummy. botrytis grape. That is... That is a yummy dish. Yeah. Um, there's not much I can fault on it. I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. I think the thing that jumps out at me is how much flavour's packed into the bird and grapes and that vinaigrette or sauce that's in the bottom. And there's a nice contrast between fresh and cooked grapes and also that dried fennel, a little bit of herb. There are two types of good dishes. They're good dishes you can't fault, and there are good dishes that achieve greatness because they're surprising mm. and because they do that essential thing of you know, sweet sauce, your immediate reaction is, oh, it's going to overpower the quail. And that quail still stands as the hero of that dish. Yeah. And it's beautifully cooked. You know what I'm most pleased about? This is the closest one so far, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. For me, I look, I eat both yeah. of them, and I'm not going, oh, that one's, that one's slightly overcooked, so I'm going to mark it down. Yeah, but you, I you... like both of them. I think they've done a great job. I'm going to be fascinated to see how you score this one, boys. We have a battle on our hands between yeah, these two. Yeah, no Big doubt. time.